This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map. Arabian Oasis for game number one of this best of nine show match sponsored by Media Storm. Big thanks to Media Storm and kicking it off in the south, playing the yellow marked of Kane. This is Senna. And in the north, playing blue, playing GDI, at least for game number one, this is Shock Trepid. Shock Trepid versus Senna in a best of nine, courtesy of Media Storm. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, then you've probably heard Media Storm's name. He is one of the most consistent sponsors of the channel. Is sponsored many, many show matches and tournaments. Ooh, we do want to note that Shock Trepid grabs the EMP Control Center. So he is playing against Mark of Kane, which is a faction that has a lot of EMP, but he himself has grabbed the EMP Control Center. We'll see if Senna decides to knock that down. For now, Shock Trepid might have his own EMP that he can unleash upon his opponent. But anyways, big thanks to Media Storm for sponsoring this show match. Media Storm has sponsored many show matches over the last year and a half, or maybe even two years. So huge support of the channel over on Patreon. And of course, a huge thanks to everyone who does support the channel over on Patreon. Never obligated, but always appreciated. Uh, after all, the videos come out for free. So I very much appreciate them, but... uh Videos come out for free for everyone. So the tips are nice, but you get to see the videos regardless. Triple APC, two rockets, one rifleman. Eh, MCV is gonna get tagged. And this is where uh, the EMP is actually pretty good because the damage output from Awakened against vehicles is reasonably high. But as you did see there, a rifleman inside of an APC will keep firing even if the APC is EMP'd. So the APC's gun stops working, but the rifleman inside can still shoot out. Senna ready to go at his natural expansion. Got a couple of bikes coming out. It's a big push into Eco for Senna. So if he is going for a, a refinery, he is probably gonna have to power it down and hold the harvester. If he's going war factory, oh, he is going refinery. Okay, so it will be powered down. This is a nice amount of aggression for Shock Trepid to open this series. He's gonna get some free damage onto this. And uh, if, okay, it's gonna be hand of nod. Only one bike was ready when Senna moved in to attack and defend this. EMP lands, two of the APCs get caught, but the third one is still here. No rocket squads, it's just awakened so far, but it is gonna be a laser turret as well. So a couple of Scorpion tanks will be able to help push this away. Pitbulls are still here, there's four of them, and an engineer is trying to cross the map, maybe even go for that EMP control center. What is this engineer even doing? from Shock Trepid. Senna taking a bit more damage than he would like. The laser turret is going to help anchor him in this position. The rockets will help as well. If Shock Trepid manages to steal that refinery, that will be a massive get for him. But no, he is going to go for the EMP control center. Very curious choice. I have no idea why he is doing that. At the very most, it'll prompt Senna to just destroy that EMP control center like there's almost certainly no world where Senna doesn't either destroy that EMP control center or just capture it with his own engineer which is also a possibility Senna after taking a little bit of damage back on the home front he decides to try and counter attack doesn't get very far that war factory placement really tightens up this walk area this choke point and causes some problems. No pit bulls remain out on the field, which means this harvester can only be revealed by infantry, which is what you see right there. Most of a load of blue Tiberium for Senna, so he is going to be able to steal that, considering how delayed that refinery was from when it would the normal timing that it would have had. It uh, it is nice to get that blue Tiberium. EMP control center is here. Shock Trepid is keeping up so much pressure in this area. Low power mode for Senna, unfortunately. 
Shock Trumpet is keeping up so much pressure here that Senna has not been able to do anything about this EMP control center. Is actually being held for quite a while by Shock Trumpet. Rocket Trooper is going to have to get out of the way because Preds are coming to town. Shredder Troy does still hold the line against these missile squads, and the infantry have been cleared out of that garrisonable structure, so it's going to be up to the Rockets of Senna to take it back over. Obelisk is now here. Senna goes up to Tier 3. There's the Operations Center. The Tech Lab is somewhere else all the way here in the main base, and this Obelisk is going to shut this down. It is a very very short walk from your natural expansion to your opponent's natural expansion on this map. So it does not look like we are going to be seeing either player take a third base. This is a two base kind of play for Shock Trepid, but he never got that fourth refinery. So he may actually need a refinery on this blue Tiberium to keep this attack going because he is certainly planning to keep this position. Decent number of Predator tanks moving in, seven or eight of them, but there's more reinforcements plus a pit bull on the way. Obelisk will get focused down, but it's been a long time since I saw regular Predator tanks attacking an Obelisk, especially here at the six minute mark. EMPs have not landed from Senna, so he is going to have that as an option very soon, but it hasn't happened just yet. First EMP lands, massive hit on those Predators, but finally a Hammerhead does show up. Some anti-infantry fire power for shock trap it and this base is wasted senna holding on for as long as he can but Shock Trepid has been too aggressive. Shock Trepid got too much of an advantage early on and now forcing Senna to double drop SAM sites just to try and keep the infantry online. If Senna could have had this expansion up and running for even a minute, he would have been in a much better position in this game, but this expansion never got online and maybe he can find some way, some miracle way to actually push Shock Trepid back and recover in this game. But he's just got so little to do it on and Shock Trepid has every option available to him in the world and that will be it. GG gets called, Shock Trepid gets a very aggressive win here in game number one. And that sends us to Extraction Plateau for game number two. In the north, now playing Black Hand. This is Shock Trepid. He's, of course, up 1 0 after that very aggressive game number one. And with the option for map choice, which seeing those descents, you may be thinking he's playing Trav, but no, it's Reaper. This is Senna. These folks choosing random in this show match. Senna drawing Reaper. We'll see if it gives him better luck than the Marked of Cain did last game. Extraction Plateau is the loser's choice. So in this case, I chose the opening map, Arabian Oasis, and then it is loser's pick after that for the rest of this best of nine. So... There are so, so, so many maps to choose from in Kane's Wrath. This is 1.02 plus, by the way, R21. H? Are we up to H? It's whatever the most recent letter is. Uh, this is, you know, March 1st that I'm recording this, but these games were played February 28th, maybe 29th, literally just a couple of days ago. Very recent. So it is whatever is the most recent version of the 1.02 plus patch, which is out right now. MCV on the move to the low ground, operations center, and two flame tanks. Two flame tanks, and the scout still comes in. I was just about to talk about how Senna got anti-scouted and how Shock Trepid did a really good job of shutting down those early game screen units, which are so slippery. But right as I was about to say that, no, no, no. We had a couple of descents walking right into the base. Three. Still no sell-off of that operations center. So at least three flame tanks. A super-duper delay on the economy of Shock Trepid. Flame tank number one. Not really expected to get any damage at him. If he got a power plant, that would be massive. He gets a power plant! He actually does shut that down. Now, fortunately, Senna had another power plant already queued up. Pretty much ready to go. 
so it wasn't that big of a deal if that mcv had been picked up and that power plant hadn't been ready that would have been low power mode which would have shut down the photon cannon which ultimately wouldn't have had that big of an impact because the other flame tanks have actually already backed off so in that case uh not that big of a deal but if there had been more flame tanks, that could have been potentially a problem. For now, the flame tanks are going to be rallied up to the north. They're being sent out of the main path of this map and possibly are going to wait in the corner for a natural expansion bop. If they want to show up and try and kill a couple of buildings at the natural, oftentimes your nerve center, your tier three will end up over at that natural expansion and when your opponent goes flame tanks you have to be wondering is anywhere safe hopefully we do see some very active uh scouting from senna and definitely now because he needs to know there is no natural expansion shock trepid he heard this was a best of nine but he thought it was supposed to be played out in nine minutes and he's like, all right, every game can't last longer than nine minutes. He is going aggressive, drops another hand of Nod. So he's going to sell off that stuff back there and reposition his reinforcements into the middle of the map. Black Disciples have been purchased. I'll go out on a limb and say, yeah, Purifying Flame has not been purchased, even though Purifying Flame melts buildings. Shock Trepid could absolutely burn down an entire base so much faster with purifying flame flame tanks and rocket squads going to be joining forces here in the middle of the map a couple of descents did manage to sneak through a couple of seeker tanks as well so they can put a lot of pressure on these harvesters this is four undefended harvesters and that is six seeker tanks they're not going to burn through those harvesters super fast but it's not going to be slow either you do have to do something about it and yeah shock trepid is going to just give up on his main base essentially so bye bye to that main base mcv is what you've got that's why it's mobile construction vehicle and uh, well one power plant down flame tanks doing a pretty good job of trying to thin out this front row shard walkers being eliminated there is still a decent number of rocket squads here but getting the war factory would be a huge boon here for shock trap and it's so close a couple of rockets might be needed but no he doesn't need the rockets and this flame tank goes double vet but he won't go heroic he gets blasted as the black hand squad come in in from the north side from so long ago they were forgotten but not by shock trepid as he goes for the refinery shock trepid doesn't believe in senna having an expansion and he doesn't believe in him himself having an expansion shock troopers or shock treatment shock trepid needs to deal with these buzzer hives but also needs to deal with these shard walkers as his attack is running out of steam his economy being gutted on the other side of the map has a lot to do with that uh, two tib towers under the control of shock trepid he's got two tib spikes fueling his economy he never actually killed the refinery of senna so okay there we go i was like i'm not sure what his plan is from here and he didn't know either which means after a very aggressive two games the score is one two one senna gets a win shock trepid gets a win both players take a point in this series and here we are on desert field for game number three once again getting reaper 17 this is senna meanwhile in the south playing as the marked of kane different faction every single game this is shock trepid shock trepid playing very aggressively and i believe this map we did see also a very aggressive game from drive in a show match against futurama so I wouldn't be entirely surprised if we saw another very aggressive game from Shock Trepid. Would love to see someone capture these mutant hovels. You know, there is some money on the line, $75 prize pool for this match. So it's not a huge amount of cash, but it is a little bit of money. And sometimes people don't like, well, people don't like mutant hovels, even in, even just playing around online games, they don't like playing mutant hovels. So why would they get a mutant hovel in a show match when there is actual money on the line? Double tib spike, very close to your base on this map. 
Power Plant will be targeted down. Shock Trepid goes for the Shadow Team Rush and will get one Power Plant for his trouble. Buzzer Hive gets deployed. Both squads escape very nicely. All right, so Shock Trepid does manage to get out of Senna's base. He manages to get a full scout, get the kill on that power plant, and escape the Shardwalker. EMP on the refinery, maybe? Just to be annoying. If you EMP the refinery, then, uh, you know, before the second refinery gets out, then nothing can refine. But with the second refinery, they just have to change their target, which refinery they are going for. In game number one, we saw Shock Trepid go for the double EMP control center. And once again, there are two EMP control centers on this map, but we don't see that same play just yet. Second scout coming in. So this is a double confirmed by Senna. He had a, he had a buzzer earlier in the main base of Shock Trepid. And now he has sent a second buzzer in just to get the reconfirmation scout. He is confirming and reconfirming everything in Shock Trepid's base. And can you blame him? After two very aggressive games to start off this show match, I cannot blame Senna for wanting to double check or triple check everything that Shock Trepid seems to be doing. And I mean, even in this game, Shadow Team Rush already happened. So Senna has already had some goofiness to deal with. Power Plant could be sniped. If the Shadow Teams dive on that Power Plant, it probably will cost them. But the Scout comes in. Both the Buggy and the Shadow Teams will kind of get eyes into the natural expansion of Senna. Couple of Scorpion tanks. All right, there's the refinery. Now, of course, Shock Trepid did steal the Blue Tiberium as well from the middle of the map. In this case, he did have to slow down his economy to get out those, uh, those shadow teams. So maybe stealing the blue Tiberium is worth it when you've got a little bit of a slower economy start. Normally, the blue Tiberium isn't worth it super, super early on. It's better to wait for it to uh, wait for your main field to dry up a little bit more before you go for it. Secret Tanks and Shardwalkers going to get a couple of Scorpion Tanks as they try to retreat to the Natural Expansion. Expansion. The repair is nice, but it's not far enough out to save that Scorpion Tank. Harvester going right back to that Blue Tiberium. I think that's an auto harvest. I don't think that's intentional. Engineer gets sniped. Descents as well. These Shadow Teams proving to be very valuable, but this will be the end of the line for at least one of those Shadow Team squads. And the Harvester did get called back away from that front line. He does get sent to the natural expansion, and he will resume his normal harvesting duties. And actually, this Shadow Team manages to escape those scanners trying desperately to find the stealth units but they do manage to escape and that was actually a good snipe by shock trepid a very uh i don't know how clever it was but that was a well-timed scout from those oh is the awaken gonna see the engineer they might not actually see the engineer there but those shadow teams were very well timed to go through uh, the, the expansion at that point. Engineer will escape down to the south. Could just be going for the snipe on the... E uh, could be just trying to steal one of the tip spikes. EMP lands. Descent's going to push forward. Scorpion tanks are going to have to get out of dodge. Lightning spike has absorbed a lot of shots here. Tip troopers here on the front line as well, but there's enough shard launchers that they can make short work of those tip troopers. Engineer making its way down south will eventually find its way into Shock Trepid's base. If this engineer slow walks its way all the way into Shock Trepid's base, that will be pretty amazing. Shock Trepid is up to tier three, so he does have the option for obelisks to try and hold this off. Dozer blades have also been completed. Engineer gets crushed. No, Senna. All the way down into the southern edge of the map, and the engineer just gets crushed. A sad, sad story for Senna. Descends in the army. A lot of secret tanks. 
force fields now up dev tanks are here as well they're going to charge up on that blue tiberium this is a lot of scorpion tanks they've got dozer blades but there's going to be the stasis locking down six or seven or eight of those scorpion tanks out of this fight avatar going to get overwhelmed all of the forces here need reinforcements but they're all locked up in that stasis shield and senna finds the perfect angle senna finds the perfect opportunity to use that stasis shield and lock down those units both avatars fall before anything comes back up but there is a third avatar now here which will need to be targeted quickly by senna both of the husks get sniped no engineers will be able to recover those and the harvesters are being massacred by these secret tanks fortunately they do switch targets fortunately for shock trap it they allow one of those harvesters to escape but it's out of the frying pan and into the fire as the shadow as the shard launchers take a couple of shots at them force fields are good but they're not invincible Senna striking down three of those avatars, but the reinforcements are still just cheap tier one units. He's not reinforcing with tripods or anything hardier. He's instead going to be taking a third base. He's going aggressive, but he's covering an expansion as well. So his economy is still pumping. And Senna did not get the damage done to the economy of Shock Trepid that he wanted, but he certainly did slow it down, especially compared to the fact that Senna already has his third base up and running. The only thing that Senna is missing is tripods. And there's the scout. Catalyst missile lands knocks down the shields on the harvesters gets the refinery as well engineer now out couple of tip spikes could be the target for that engineer and shock trepid is going to get his natural expansion back online harvester is going to have to run away from the middle decent amount of blue tiberium there for senna inside of that harvester and Senna is going to have to reestablish this third base, but also defend it at the same time. Secret Tank's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those Scorpions. Dozer Blades versus the Force Fields of the Skrin. And Senna might actually just have to cut and run from this location. If he doesn't have an answer for these Avatars, there's three of them here on the front line now. Ooh, one of these Scorpion tanks goes heroic as well. Unfortunately for Shock Trepid, he's got supercharged particle beams, so no heroic laser capacitor Scorp, which would be amazing. That engineer never actually uh, landed anywhere, I don't think. Harvesters transferring down, but that is a short life for them. Dev tanks are all charged up. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these avatars. There's going to be the buzzer swarm support power called in, but it gets instantly denied and sniped. One avatar down, but one dev tank is eliminated as well and desperately trying to hold on to this assault. Shock Trepid does not want to give up this position and give up these husks to the potential of a screen capture. He should go ahead and snipe those husks if he's going to abandon this position. At the same time, Shock Trepid did manage to grab that EMP control center. So if he can hold on to this game for a couple of more minutes, he will have an EMP under his control and he will be able to utilize it. Senna has backed off. Couple of dev tanks here, but they have lost their charge. And as soon as they lose their charge, they're so much worse at killing the avatars. Barracks on the front line. Senna's gonna have to pull together a pretty amazing defense as more avatars walk in for the reinforcement for Shock Trepid. Power plant goes down on the front line, but the, the defense is getting thin. Senna doesn't have any cash in the bank. His income is spent 13K more total resources gathered than Shock Trapit, but he doesn't have anything to show for it right here, right now. Behind the scenes, Shock Trapit going for the expansion. The dev tanks have found an angle, but it's only on one of the avatars and they can't even finish it off. The shields are good, but the lasers are better. Finally, a couple of descents managed to get out. Can they actually kill one of these avatars off? It's so low, but he's not actually able to clean them up. So many avatars escaping with low health bars, and Senna just cannot clean up this Nod army. Desperately trying with the descents, closes in on one. Can he target down these other two low health? 
No, the Tip Troopers are here to save the day. The Buzzers can close the distance. The Buzzers get the kill. Senna keeping up the pressure, but he's got those Scorpion tanks at the back of his base if Senna can capture the Husks. No, a Husk does get sniped. Another Husk getting targeted. It gets eliminated, and Senna losing an opportunity to save his army with the use of those Husks. Shock Trepid is sniping the Husks. Three avatars below half health. The game that could have been if Senna would have been able to kill those three avatars, those three additional avatars, and capture their husks. He could have kept that offensive moving, but it is not meant to be. The heroic scorpion tank in the back door as Shock Trepid finds the way in and finds the path to victory. And game four will take us to pipeline problems. Once again, looking to even up the score. This is Senna playing yellow, playing GDI. And of course, it's Crane first because it's pipeline problems. You got that blue Tiberium so, so close. Meanwhile, in the south, playing the blue, playing Traveler, it's Shock Trepid. Also going Crane first. It would be kind of insane to go fast leg descents just to try and shut down your opponent's expansion. No, what's going on? No! Senna! How much time did he just lose? Not that much, but certainly more than he would like. Eight seconds, 10 seconds, something like that. He is gonna let the Harvester fill up. As you saw, Shock Trepid, the first t Harvester actually only goes for half for a lot of players because half a load of blue Tiberium is an equivalent to a full load of green Tiberium, but you harvest it quite a bit faster and you get that cash boost quicker. But uh, in this case, Senna kind of either messed that up or forgot, or I don't know what his, uh, what, what the reason for that harvester sitting AFK was. But at any rate, Senna with a slight misstep, a little bit of a slower economy start for the GDI player. And since Scrin typically have a bigger, faster economy in the early game anyways, it's possible that that does compound. I don't think that's the end of the game, but that is certainly a uh, an unforced error on the side of Senna and a slight advantage for Shock Trepid, although he doesn't even know it. He has no idea that he's got that little bit of an advantage. And is he... Oh, this is two Harvesters on the blue instead of three. Even most GDI and Nod players will go three Harvesters on the blue. You can end up uh, running into a situation where you don't have enough Tiberium silos to actually hold all of the Tiberium and you kind of get locked up on your economy. But that doesn't always happen and a lot of times they just spend a little bit more at their natural, keep their crane around for a little bit longer, and that solves the problem. Shock Trepid is posturing a little bit aggressively, and Senna is mega worried about it. Lightning Spike as well. He's just going to go for the crane. He might be able to get it. It's not a lot of firepower here, but the Lightning Spike and the Secret Tanks have enough firepower to knock down a crane because of how little health it has. Predator Tank is here to help knock down these Seekers, and Senna loses the crane. A bit of an unfortunate move here for Senna. Last secret tank will go down. Okay, so that's at the end of the aggression. I mean, Shock Trepid should try and keep this up, but really killing the crane is what he wanted. He committed a lot to that. A lightning spike and the repair drones both committed to getting that kill. Hello. Just one? Can we see two? Ah, oh, all right, all right. I was like, man, if Shock Trepid after that goes into like a triple Storm Rider switch up where you go like 12 Storm Riders, that would be amazing. But no, he's going Devastator Warships, which are an excellent siege unit. I'm not criticizing Shock Trepid's strategy. I just want to see the goofball moves. I want to see that silly stuff. I want to see someone do something stupid for my entertainment. But, you know, I cannot fault him for going Devastator Warships. That was a very aggressive Devastator Warship position. It looks like it will make it back home, and he will be able to heal up without too much trouble. Uh, we got ourselves a couple of Rocket Squads, a couple of Predator Tanks over here on the right side. They were going for 
Uh, definitely an aggressive posture. AA battery at the front line will be the first thing targeted by the tripod and the Devastator warship. Third AA battery gets deployed just in time. The second one is slightly further back, and actually we're going into hammerheads. I thought maybe the, the airfield was purely for firehawks to help deal with the scrin air, but he is also going hammerheads, which are a very good choice. AP ammo has finished up, so Senna does have that at least, and that is always good for a GDI player to have a P ammo. Phase does fire off, and fortunately for Shock Trepid, he has that get out of jail free card, but he's only using that on one tripod. Reinforcements get called in. Okay, this was, again, Senna very worried about a lot of this stuff. A lot of posturing defensively over here. Ended up needing it here next to the crane. Does have an extra watchtower. Probably forgot to sell that off. Definitely don't want to give away any APCs if you don't have to. Those are not the Bloodhounds called in, so those aren't the rank one APCs. Tripods, Devastator warships. This could be a really tough thing to hold. Fortunately, he's Traveler, so there is no Stasis Shield. It's just a slow field for the GDI to deal with. No Preds with Railguns just yet. That's another unfortunate thing for the GDI. And fortunately, these Devastator warships are really just targeting AA batteries. They're not shelling the MCV. They're not knocking down the command post. So that's, uh, that is okay. Whoa, infantry sneaking around from the left side. And they do manage to get the War Factory. They shut down the frontline production of Shock Trap. And, and Senna finds a weakness. He finds an opening. And he takes all of the pressure off of his front door. And on top of that, these rockets do manage to escape. At least some of them, they can turn around and kill that Gunwalker. And then potentially go for power plants. Try and poke and prod the main base. Do a little bit of damage here or there without trying to necessarily end the game good use of the buzzer swarm support power getting called in there by shock trepid to deal with that senna making some damage happen with the infantry cohort on the flank refinery is here has not been shelled fortunately for shock trepid or fortunately for senna he was able to get that up and running but he cannot match the uh, the screen economy with the 1,000 harvesters and two refineries. He should have a second refinery finishing up soon. I assume that is what he's going for. Another lightning spike on the front line. This is just to draw the attention of the GDI player and uh, hopefully allow Shock Trepid to get into a better position while shelling all of these anti-air batteries. Lightning Spike is already gone. Senna needs Juggernauts. He needs rail guns. something. Even a Marv would be great in this position uh, to help hold this off because if it's just Devastator Warships shelling you all day, you need, you know, something to hit back. Avatar is going to be striking. There's Shockwave Artillery that lands on a good chunk of these Avatars, taking them out of the fight, but the Devastator Warships still shelling mostly just the infantry. Not enough firepower to actually knock down this Skrin army, and the Orca Strike too late to actually land on anything. We need another flank now from Senna, and there's going to be the slow field on top of the infantry, on top of the barracks as well, as the right flank collapses for Senna. Shock Trepid breaks through and now the harvesters will be under threat as well. Firehawks coming back. Even they get caught in the slow field. They will be able to clean up another Devastator warship, which would be fantastic if there wasn't a war factory and four or five tripods here on the front line. The GG comes out and Senna, he had a great a flank attack there in the middle of the game, but not enough of a late game army to hold off all that screen. Shock Trepid extends his lead three to one. And for the first time in this series, we have got ourselves a mirror matchup. They have been rotating factions. They've been playing random. That was not a prescription of the show match. I did not force that upon them, but I did tell them that, you know, if they wanted to agree on something like that, both players playing random, they could. Uh, in this case, they both get GDI. So Shock Trepid still playing blue in the north, up 3-1 against Senna, playing the yellow GDI in the south. Senna 
having a rough go of some of these aggressive games from Shock Trepid. Of course, game number two, Senna was able to deal with the aggression much more handily there on Extraction Plateau, able to blast it down. And now Senna and Shock Trepid both getting GDI. Of course, very stock standard faction. It's not uh, Zocom or it's not, I guess, everything else everything is pretty standard these get these days it's been a long time since a faction was massively underplayed but and i mean even steel talons because of rail guns because of behemoths people can play them pretty similarly to gdi uh in this case gdi is something that both players will be super duper familiar with super duper comfortable with and it's tournament rift Tiberium Rift, slight variation, but it is, again, a comfort pick of a map, something that both players are going to have a ton of experience on. So even though this is a random v. random, even though these guys have been having to wheel and deal with different factions every game, this one should be a very comfortable, very straightforward match from both. And their opening builds reflect that perfectly the stock standard macro oriented build order this has become the norm and a slight variation on this this is the build that has been refined this is like the one from all of kane's wrath history that is the build it's been basically 15 years that people have been doing this same kind of thing. And we're seeing it here once again today. Variations will come at the natural expansion. In this moment, it hasn't happened yet. They are still continuing to mirror each other. Uh, sometimes GDI matches do just turn into Pitbull spam fests. We do just see untold numbers of pit bulls and people will go all the way to tier three with it. They will get the mortar upgrade. But, uh, you know, it looks like Shock Trepid is already switching it up into Preds. He's getting a couple of APCs as well. We might see Rocket APC with some Preds mixed in. Second War Factory for Shock Trepid, but it's a second refinery for Senna. Okay. This is not especially greedy. I would like it if Senna had a better scout. Oh, no, he does actually have three Pitbulls going for the scout in the north. So it's not an actual base scout, but he is at least putting on a little bit of pressure and he will. Hey, he does have a predator tank in the middle of the map, so he can potentially see some of this coming. There is a very slow arc of blue dots that are moving their way towards Senna's base in the top right hand corner. That natural expansion will be feeling a bit of pressure. Third refinery into war factory into command post for AP ammo. So Shock Trepid is not playing standard macro on the natural expansion. Double airfield. Okay, this is something that uh, in a normal game, double airfield from GDI after your fourth refinery, not that crazy of a move, not some kind of wackadoo nonsense that no one's ever seen before. But I feel like in this series, it actually is kind of a little bit out of nowhere. This is not necessarily what I would have expected Senna to do in this show match, given how it has gone so far. Pitbull's going to get a couple of shots against this Harvester, and Shock Trepid hasn't done anything. He was posturing in the north, and then he told everyone to go south, and now he's telling everyone to come back home. Two harvesters off the line. Not some big damage, but this is like the perfect scout from Senna. That was basically the perfect move. Is he getting tungsten shell? That is sort of the one question that remains here for Shock Trepid. We are not seeing big slingshot numbers. Oh, it's APCs. It's continuing to be APCs. He needs a couple of slingshots. Okay, there's the slingshot. It might be tungsten shells. I assume it's rail guns, but it might be tungsten shells if he is expecting even more aircraft, which he shouldn't. I would like to see a scan come in from... Uh, Shock Trepid, just to get eyes on Senna's base. He may have already done it. Slingshots are here. 
Two slingshots may actually be enough to completely push this away. Hammerheads have taken a decent amount of damage. Two of them are below half health. And uh, Railgun APC, or Railgun AP ammo, is a powerful combination for these Preds and APCs. Preds on the north side. Tier 3 is up for both players. Mammoth Tanks also being a choice here for Senna. He will be able to get this one War Factory. He will be able to clear out that main base. It's almost the race to Railguns, the race to the late game tech for these two players. Uh, zone Troopers have not jumped inside of this Marv. Engineer will get crushed. Second Zone Trooper Squad does manage to get in, and the Marv does at least have repairs courtesy of this Reclamator Hub. And Railguns have not finished up yet, so it's going to take these Predator Tanks a lot longer to finish off this Marv than it would otherwise. Zone Troopers don't jump inside of that Marv, and that is three. That could be three Zone Weapons inside of the Marv that just do not happen. Railguns finish up almost at the exact same time for both players and the MCV under threat the base race is on and neither player would totally eliminate the other one's base but an MCV kill could be a massive advantage here for Senna Marv survives on the right side of the map and there's the end of the predator tanks the conyard survives senna's got the faster third refinery here in game number five senna has got an amazing setup for the next stage of this game the only thing that's bad about senna's setup so far is that he lost all of those predator tanks he got a lot of damage on the mcv and if he would have killed the mcv it would have been worth it to have lost all of those predator tanks but he lost so many Predator tanks, and he didn't get the MCV. He has definitely stopped any kind of expansion from happening from Shock Trepid. That one slingshot was a little bit too far away from home. But of course, Senna with the faster Marv and with the faster third is going to be able to Marvist the field in the south and expand to the field in the north for the perfect 3.5 base economy setup here, which I mean, really it's just one base economy plus the Marv in the South, which is gonna hoover up a bunch of this cash and will allow Senna to call in things like shockwave artillery, any other support powers that he may want while keeping his economy focused on production back at home. Shockwave artillery may not even be needed uh, Shockwave Artillery will fire off for Shock Trumpet though, and he catches that Marv, snipes another Engineer. The RNG is good for Shock Trumpet. Hammerheads show up, so it's a race against time. Railguns will win that race as the Marv explodes, and the GG gets called. Shock Trumpet not wanting to play that one out to the bitter end, and Senna puts another point on the board, shortening the gap between these two players. And sending us to Sick City for game number six. In the north, playing the nod, playing the blue, this is Shock Trumpet. In the south, playing the yellow, this is is Senna. Vanilla Scrin versus Vanilla Nod. Here in game number six, it is a small map. So we'll see if the buzzer is able to easily clear buildings or if the Nod having flames and stealth is more of an advantage for how these players want to play this. Shock Trumpet very nearly going up well not very nearly but in that last game if he had been able to play things out a little bit differently then he would have been on match point situation instead senna gets an opportunity to even up their score to make this 3-3 three, three as we head towards the second half of this show match shock trepid wants desperately to pick up those last two wins and just close this out but Senna in that last game, proving that, you know, with the right faction on the right map, he is more than a match for Shock Trepid. Shock Trepid not going ultra aggressive so far. Now that the MCB has packed up, we'll see where it's actually heading. If it is up to the high ground or if it is just for a cross map base push right from the beginning of the game. 
Now, what we will see sometimes on Six City is a third refinery drop up here into kind of an, a middle of the road MCV position on the low ground, which gives you a potential to drop build radius, to drop base defenses here, and then kind of uh, leapfrog your way towards your opponent's natural expansion. And you do ha have a little bit of a holdout of build radius back here on the high ground. So there is still a way that even with a more normal natural expansion posturing from Shock Trepid, it can still go really aggressive and end really quickly. We shall see. Double Blue Tiberium, always like to highlight the bridges to the Blue Tiberium. Sometimes it is of consequence in this game, sometimes it is not. Refinery is going to have to be powered down with these three Seeker Tanks here. You don't want to just give away a bunch of damage on your Harvester. There we go. Refinery gets placed and powered down immediately. This is very reminiscent of game number one on Arabian Oasis, where Senna was having to power down his uh, Refinery, was having to defend against that, like, Pred APC or Pitbull APC stuff that was coming at him right from the beginning. Seeker Tanks are here. This is a lot more damage to the refinery than I was expecting to have happen. There isn't a lot of reinforcements here, but there is going to be a lightning spike and there are repair drones as well. So it's going to be a double shredder turret to make sure that there are no descents and to just add that extra little, da little bit of damage to this attack. But these seeker tanks are going to be getting as much value as they possibly can in this instance. I don't think they'll actually get... Oh, they did! They got a kill on that scorpion tank! They'll almost get a second scorpion tank on exit. Uh, but that should be it. I think the lightning spike won't get any more kills. There we go. All right, Shock Trepid does manage to clean everything up. Behind this, Senna does have a 3K income advantage, but we'll see if he's actually able to hold on to that as Shock Trepid crosses the map and looks for some counterattack damage. He's like, I had to build all of these predator, these scorpion tanks, uh, so I might as well see if I can get any kind of use out of them. Harvesters do not get pulled early. Senna, I mean, he saw this coming, but he did not pull the harvesters fast enough. If even if he just pulled them over here, that would have been better than leaving them on the front line. Senna's response is very strong, though. Dev tanks, descents, and seeker tanks all to push away those scorpion tanks. So Senna, he had a much faster expansion economy, but he has now lost that harvester. He has been disrupted, and we will see if Shock Trepid is able to bounce back his own eco and catch up in the total resources gathered. Uh, okay, I was like, where's this flame tank going? Because it was angled directly across the middle of town. And of course, that's where the descents and the seekers, well, and now this dev tank are. Vanilla Scrin got a stasis chamber. Stasis shield can instantly lock down any section of the map. And it's going to be a couple of flame tanks. It is a one and a half base tier three tech. Is it another refinery? Okay, it is. I was like, if he is going one clicks off of one refinery, that's going to be kind of amazing to see. Avatar is here. No obelisks to help deal with the dev tank, so it's just going to be juggling that avatar. But a couple of flame tanks have been split off, I think one to the north and one to the south. Uh, for Shock Trepid. Maybe he'll be able to sneak through and get it. There's going to be the shutdown of the War Factory and that Avatar. The perfect placement there by Senna. Scorpion tanks. There's a couple of them left over. Fortunately, this refinery is actually saved as well. So Shock Trepid uh, kind of getting a little bit lucky there in the fact that one of his refineries will be saved. His economy won't totally flatline at his natural expansion. But, okay, the dev tanks don't actually want to stay in range of the obelisk, so they decide to not engage with that avatar, which also means that avatar will survive. These dev tanks, they need to get the tier 3. They need to get some kind of value. Shock Trumpet worried about that exact kind of thing. Now, keep in mind, on the other side of the map, there are a couple of flame tanks moving in. Shock Trumpet is going to have an opportunity to clap back with some big damage if those flames find the right angle into Senna's base. Power plants getting targeted. 
Senna has to deal with this. Oh no, the flame tank turns around. Shock Trumpet says, I am not ready to go just yet. I'd rather wait for another distraction somewhere else. And uh, I'm not actually sure what happened to that other flame tank. I, I thought for sure there were two, and indeed there may be. A couple of descents trying to go for the kill on that Tib Spike. There's the second flame tank. Hasn't gone for anything. He burned the bridge. Okay, nicely done, nicely done. Kill a bridge, not a bad idea. Dev tanks trying desperately to sneak out of this section, but their attack path has been cut off, and the flame tank makes its way into the base. Refinery does go down. Tripod is here to kill off this flame tank, so the power plant will survive. Both bridges have been eliminated, but in a way that benefits Shock Trepid and not in a way that benefits Senna. Devastator Warship camped out over the middle of the map. Going to be targeting down that refinery. Devastator Warship, or Dev Devourer Tanks will be shut down by these avatars. One goes, the other one goes. Devastator Warship gets the refinery. The refinery that survived has now died. Venoms are the choice. Laser Capacitors finishing up very soon, I would assume. Although at this point, there aren't a whole lot of units that actually can benefit from the laser capacitors, but shutting down that screen air is very important for the nod. So it's either going to be Tibcore missiles, and the hope is that you can just do it with the SAM sites, or it's going to be the laser capacitors. And I guess it is EMP coils? Did he go EMP coils and nothing else? Okay, no, he did go laser capacitors. Uh, just the upgrade looks slightly different on the uh, on the building than I thought. Oh, okay, no, I was just looking at it wrong. I missed the big laser in the center. Double Devastator Warship above the Nod base. This War Factory is going to go down. Basically, no way to stop that. Secret Shrine does get established. Double Barracks on the front line. So it is going to be a man-spam transition for Shock Trepid. Senna with a almost really strong position on two bases, but man, those flame tanks, or that one flame tank, just uh, kind of resetting Senna's momentum. He had a lot of potential, and then losing that refinery, having to refocus his forces on defending. Oh, if he grabs a couple of avatars here, really nice way to thin out the army of your opponent. One avatar goes down. Tripods. There are no rockets! This is a double hand of Nod, but I guess Shock Trumpet just doesn't have the income. I was expecting to see like 40 rockets there, but no, there's literally two, three rocket squads out there on the front line. It's gonna be up to the commando to close the distance with these tripods and get the kills. Senna's slowing down the front line. He's happy to wait for a couple of more base defenses and a war factory. All right, this is six avatars on the front line. A couple of rockets are here. Commando could be moving in as well. There are gunwalkers to easily counter the commando, but we'll see what the tripods are able to do. First tripod is down. Every tripod that gets eliminated, if the husk can be recovered, that could be massive for Shock Trepid on the counterattack. One of those... Uh, yeah, two tripods are still phased. So one tripod did get eliminated right around when the phase happened. The rocket squads get cleaned up. Avatars and Vertigo Bomber is going to try and deal with these tripods. The force fields are nice, but they are not the one-stop shop. Another tripod going down to the Vertigos. And this, uh, this commando could have potentially gotten more kills, but did get eliminated. An engineer is coming out from Senna. The front line has been broken. Shock Trep it moments too late on the defense moments too late on the redeemer moments too late on the vertigos everything almost working out for shock trepid but it just doesn't it's gonna be avatars versus or it's gonna be tripods versus redeemer vertigo is coming in for another bombing run engineers are here a couple of tripods will pay the price three tripods going down massive damage from those vertigos but there's still three tripods on the left flank as well my drop knocks down two of them shock trepid is on the verge of pulling off the incredible hold against all of this screen fire power it shouldn't be possible 
It shouldn't be happening. And he is so close to making it happen. Truly a few moments too late. As the Vertigos come in and Senna evens up the score three to three. Shock Trepid moments away from making that a four to two and instead it's a reset on the score senna is in the same position as shock and we're back on tiki turmoil to join our friends the scary walrus man and uh the little alien statue and then uh whoever this guy is but we're back with our friends on Tiki Turmoil for the momentum center between these two in the north playing GDI. This is Senna. And in the south playing Nod. This is Shock Trepid. Both players having fantastic performances in this series. And the tiebreaker, the momentum maker, is going to be a classic GDI versus Nod. Senna performing extremely well with GDI. Granted, it was in a mirror matchup on Tiberium Rift, but his economy was on point. He was like 10 grand ahead in that game, and he was playing to the strengths of GDI, which he can do very well here on Tiki Turmoil as well. Both players having a fantastic performance in this show match. Uh, they both, you know, made their mistakes, but overall, they've played almost every game very well, and they both had their wins and their losses. They both got to showcase really good matches, really good decision-making, really good strategy, and they've both also gotten their, you know, their chance to be humbled a little bit. So we feel like this is... Close to the perfect show match. Whoever ends up losing this will probably not think so, but both players should be very happy and very proud overall with their performance in this series. Tiki Turmoil, always glad to see this map. The uh, double blue Tiberium, sometimes a big benefit, sometimes a death trap for harvesters. Natural expansions coming up. We'll see if there's any funkiness from Shock Trepid. He has been trying to throw Senna off in the mid game sometimes. For now, it's five harvesters at the main and into scorpion tanks as the third refinery comes up at the natural expansion for both players. Faster sixth harvester or I guess seventh harvester technically for Senna than for Shock Trepid, but I don't foresee that as being the uh, the sole difference maker in this game. Shock Trepid will move out with a couple of scorpions. He's got himself a second war factory as well, so he is not going full on greed. He's instead going slightly more aggressive. Second war factory doesn't always mean super aggressive. But, you know, sometimes it is that uh, prioritizing scorpions just to put some damage on the other side of the map. Not a lot of bike buggy games either. We've seen, you know, Nod, GD, we've seen Nod, Black Hand, Marked of Cain, but we have not seen a really aggressive bike buggy game from anyone. It's been much more scorpion tank focused. It's been much more mid to late game focused. Guardian Cannon as well. Okay, so Shock Trepid once again does have Senna fairly scared. Senna with only one refinery on his natural expansion does have a bit of a parking lot situation going on. Second refinery on the expansion finally up for both players. I think it was a bit faster for Shock Trepid, but understandably since Senna did have that pressure at his front door that he needed to worry about. And Senna now looking to be a bit aggressive. Maybe it'll just be to kill the Tib Spike, or maybe he will be looking to turn this into a base push. Could be Command Post into Rig, although he doesn't actually have the second War Factory at his natural expansion yet. Because he went Barracks, because he went Guardian Cannon, he has delayed that second War Factory by a decent amount. 
or he yeah he didn't build it back at his main and no it's gonna be command post into ap ammo into airfield as well it does not look like it's a second airfield no double airfield switch up here on tiki turmoil we do have the venoms coming out from shock trumpet he's got that air tower at his natural just like senna does so if it is going to be hammerheads they're kind of already countered by the venoms we'll see if the venoms actually get a good position no orca switch up at least not yet from Sh from senna tier three is up Shock Trepid has that going for him. Laser capacitors, Tib Core, obelisks, even EMP coils if he wants. All on the table. AP ammo moments away from finishing. APCs, hammerheads, all getting the benefit. Rifleman as well. Buggy Scorp with the Venoms. This has a lot of infantry killing potential. Venoms will take a couple of shots from those rockets. Both tip spikes about to be el eliminated. So if this goes to the late game, then not having those tip spikes could be a problem for both players, but they are completely gone out of the game now. A couple of Scorpion tanks and buggies are going to be paying the price. Shock Trumpet gives the order to retreat, but a couple of the units decide to disobey and they go for the last stand. Both players stealing some blue Tiberium. As you can see there, they're both managing to sneak it out. MCV on the move will be positioned before the attack comes as Senna has backed off reverse moved away he's got the Marv he's got rail guns I assume on the way could be a two baser for Senna some players some GDI players do like to play two base and then their Marv is a mobile third base or like we saw on uh Twisted Rift, Tiberium Rift, uh, it's third base at one location and the Marv harvests the other one. Another Scorpion tank going down, a little bit of a trade there, and that is a massive catch on two of those harvesters were extremely low health. I actually thought that that uh, Predator tank was a third harvester at first, but no, actually just a regular old Predator tank. So railguns have finished up. Space Command uplink as well. Senna doesn't have a lot of cash in the bank. Both players staying very equal on economy, but Shock Trepid might be about to find his advantage with that faster third timing. Senna starting to bank up a little bit of cash. He needs a decent amount if he wants to call in Shockwave and Orbital, but he might just call in Shockwave if he sees the Redeemer. Sometimes players will uh, keep a decent amount of stuff queued, knowing that they can quickly cancel it if they see at a moment's notice that, oh, I actually supersonic airstrike, big miss! These Venoms, the damage is spread out across all of these Venoms and Senna's getting pummeled. His entire infantry armada just got sliced and diced, got burned through, and the trade was like one Venom, three Venoms, so low on health, but they didn't get cleaned up. Juggernauts are the name of the game. Wait, where's the Marv? There we go, the Marv's over here on the right side. Marvistine, the right field. Juggernauts will be dealt with. Shock Trepid already ready for this. Double Marv drop right on the front line. And the Vertigo can go for another one as well. Shockwave Artillery will fire off, but it's only on two avatars. That is not a big value. He will be able to get the kill on the avatars with the, well, there's only one Juggernaut left. I don't know if he'll be able to get the kill before they the EMP wears off, but. He got one of them at least. Slingshot moves to the front line. Slingshot goes down. Obelisk won't be enough to hold off against Marvs and Juggernauts. He needed the avatars there, but they have been cleaned up. Meanwhile, the Scorpion tanks are cross mapping. They're not going for the defense of the third base. It's going to be the cross map scenario, and it is going to be a mind drop on top of a Vertigo bombing run. So Shock Trap at finding the, the damage at the main base of Senna and holding off with his air forces at his own third base. 
Uh, Predator tanks could be taking some splash damage here. No, the waste on the AA battery. A couple of rocket squads and an obelisk gonna help hold this down. And Senna has pushed too far into enemy territory. The anti-air has not been strong enough to stop the Vertigo's, not strong enough to stop the Mind Drop. And those Juggernaut numbers never recovered. If it was three Juggernauts wailing away at this base from a distance, it would be a different story. But the Scorpion tank counterattack from Shock Trepid gutting the main base of Senna and the Vertigos bringing down the front line make this look like a very ill-conceived offensive from Senna. Predator tanks going down in pairs. The power of the Vertigo bomber splash damage, knocking down those Preds. And this Marv can't shoot up. He will get the tier three, but not much more than that. This Marv is gonna be targeted relentlessly by the Vertigos. He might actually get the whole clear on this natural expansion. But the MCB is about to get cleared. Oh, okay, no, he is going to go for the engineer cap on those juggernauts. Yeah, there's one. The other one will come as well. Two juggernauts taken over by Shock Trepid. Senna. Uh, what are the Vertigos doing? There we go. The Vertigos now up on and uh, up in the air, moving towards the Marv. Big chunk of the Marv health is now gone. These harvesters need to get out of here. Scorpion tags moving into position. None of them are double vets, so we won't see the magic of a heroic Scorpion with laser capacitors. These harvesters really need to not just be sitting there next to the Marv. Eventually, the Marv will go down. The refinery does explode. Orca Strike gets called in as well. The Scorpion tanks decide we don't need to sacrifice ourselves. Yeah, let the Vertigos deal with that Marv. And the Marv does go down big husk of a shell that marv did a lot of damage but it didn't save senna it did buy him some time he should have did he oh his mcv actually survived the venoms could hunt down that mcv even if it unpacks they could still get the kill venoms go go you don't know the value that awaits you they don't know how much they could potentially even rank up off of that mcv they don't realize. Senna possibly typing some words to Shock Trumpet here at the end of the game. Some players do kind of chat about the match uh, as they're wrapping it up. Unless Senna has some kind of amazing plan to, uh, to get this one back under his control. The MCV is, is still alive. He's, uh, he's got that going for him. I think Senna could potentially win this fight. Uh, well, not with the Vertigos. Uh, against just the Scorpions, he could win the fight. But I'm not sure that he could win the fight after that. Avatars and Juggernauts just waiting in the north. And of course, the Venoms can't really be countered by the amount of units that Senna has. GG gets called. Senna has been defeated and Shock Trap it takes game number seven finally he has the momentum once again he has the match point advantage and senna's map pick is atacama road for game number eight in the north playing the yellow zocom this is senna and in the south playing the blue screen this is shock trap it And that is the luck of the draw. Zocom versus Vanilla Screen. Not a matchup most players would choose to play. But man, if Senna goes 4-4 from this position, he is going to be feeling amazing going into that ace match. An amazing feat to knock down Screen with Zocom on Atacama Road. Descents have been spotted. There's the rifleman gonna get jumped on. Senna knows that it's coming. APC? 
Could go APC after this. Goes double watchtower, so he could go double APC. Does he not even need them? I guess not. He's going double rifling. He's got that refinery. He might be going APC after that. But I mean, come on. That's actually, I mean, if he can deal with the descents with just triple riflemen, then that's fantastic. All right, quad riflemen. Not quite right. If he saves the tip spike, that's even better. The descents get the kill. And shock trap it. He kind of knows that he got found out. So getting a tip spike is, uh, once you know that you've been spotted, your expectations lower. You're like, all right, I'm going for the early descents. Maybe I win the game off of this. And then you get spotted and you're like, okay, well, unless Senna has a stroke or he gets called away from his PC, I'm not winning the game off of this against a player like Senna. So then it's like, well, maybe I can kill a couple of harvesters. And then you see four riflemen and you're like, oh, okay, well, maybe I'll kill the Tib Spike. I got the Tib Spike. And then you're happy with yourself. But Senna has more to go. Losing one Tib Spike is not the end of the road, but it definitely doesn't feel good. He does spot the Harvester stealing the Blue Tiberium. Pretty early Blue Tiberium steal. One of those things that uh, not really worth it necessarily. Harvester will come back with 90, 95% of a load of Tiberium. Triple Harv at the natural expansion. Okay, into the barracks. Watchtower as well. Senna is worried about this m pressure coming across the middle of the map from that blue Tiberium area into his natural expansion. And uh, he's delayed his fourth refinery because of it. He's gonna be able to jump on that seeker tank quite easily, shuts that down. Everything else should pull back. Senna actually goes into command post. No, it's not a fourth refinery. It's a command post for Senna. It is going to be nerve center into second war factory for Shock Trepid. So natural expansion, third refinery for both players, and then into tech and production for Shock Trepid. He is potentially just looking for the... Yeah. He wants the attenuated force fields upgrade. He wants dev tanks, and he wants to put on some pressure. Shock Trepid has found the early mid-game advantages previously in this series, and he's looking for it once again here in game number eight. Senna has pretty much perfect information. When he sees that dev tank, he sees the charge up, you can know pretty darn well what your opponent is thinking. Not getting... Oh, he did get one dev tank, but there's two more. You kill one dev tank and literally two take its place. And on top of that, Senna just lost his infantry support for this vehicle army. A couple of seeker tanks making its way into Senna's main base. Just to be annoying, not going to really cause any major problems, but it is going to have to force Senna to respond. And Senna's going to be trading out more units against these dev tanks. He will slow down this push, which potentially is a good thing, but Senna does not want to be losing any of these harvesters. Has he just not quite noticed because of all of the other chaos that's happening? He's fighting on a couple of different fronts, and so he just hasn't realized that he's got these seeker tanks in the back of his base. Tech Snipe is coming in. Orca Strike comes in. It is going to be the nerve center that gets shut down by Senna. So he will be losing a couple of harvesters here in his main base, and he truly has not realized this. He has got a huge problem. The stasis shield as well, and Senna just was not ready for this. Losing harvesters adds insult to injury, but he never got that second war factor. He went into double airfield to be able to snipe the tech of his opponent, and he had five grand in the bank when this attack showed up. He would have so much rather had the Predator tanks or rockets or anything to deal with this. Airfield does get targeted. Stratofighter does save the Firehawks, but 
How much more can you really get when your natural expansion is trashed, when your main base is under siege as well, when your harvesters have had to run for their lives and are now the only fighting force that you have left? Shock Trap, it finds the perfect angle. The anxiety of these early game attacks, the trimming of the forces of Senna, and now followed by this big one-two punch to finish the game and finish the series. The snipe came through on the tech, but Shock Trepid got the kill that mattered. Sniping the base, sniping the win and getting the series five to three will win the best of nine. Shock Trepid gets the win over Senna with a very convincing game number eight. Big thank you to both of these players for their fantastic games, for participating. Huge thanks to MediaStorm for sponsoring this show match and, I don't know, two dozen other ones over the last couple of uh, years. Big thanks to him, and of course, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and this is Cyber, signing out.